Back in the good old days, before we had the invention of Ubersubject and Uberproc.py, we used to put all our AFNI scripts together by hand. These were usually custom made and we would just cobble them together based on what we read in articles and textbooks. And usually it was a huge mess and a lot of people didn't know what they were doing. But in recent years, they've developed a script called uber underscore subject dot py, which allows you to specify all of the defaults for a single subject and then automate it. This allows less error because everything is more or less formatted the same, and so it makes it easier to debug and also to ask for help when you write to the AFNI message board. First off, make sure that you already have your Python libraries installed appropriately. If you want a thread related more to the subject, it's down in the information box down below. To run ubersubject.py, just type in the command uber underscore subject.py. It doesn't need any options, although you can use those if you wish. This will generate a Python window. And within here, you can see there are options for all the different steps of pre-processing that you'd want to do with the typical fMRI data set. First off, let's give it a subject ID. And notice that it needs to start with a letter. You can't just start it with a number or else it'll give you an error message. For the group ID, I'm going to call this MO2. And relatively recently, they've added this analysis initialization option. Now, if you're doing a resting state, you can do that and then apply those steps. And it'll be slightly different than if you do a typical task-based fMRI data set analysis. And notice you can also do this for surface-based analysis if you wish. So first things first, we're going to populate this with our anatomical data set. Here in this directory, I have it specified as a NAT plus a rig and also our epi data sets. So I'm going to select all five runs here. Now, if you've zero padded them, that is if you've included one zero before each number, then you can go ahead and specify this use wildcard form. So notice that right here it says, do you want to use the wildcard form? And if so, this is the form that it will be in. It tries to detect what is the only thing that is different between all of these different data sets. So if you formatted them with zero padding, you're able to use the wildcard form. Stimulus timing is similar. And in this directory, I have this timing folder. And I'm going to go ahead and select all of these different files. And again, wildcard form, that's fine if we want to use wildcard form because the only thing that's consistent across these is this dot 1D extension. Uh, basis functions and the stimulus type is fine. But if you want to use something like a block, so in other words, a boxcar function or a 10 function or the SPMs, time derivative function, you can use those as well. Uh, likewise, if you have more than one parametric modulator, you can use AVNI's AM2 file type. Okay. For symbolic GLTs, these are any contrasts that you want to carry out with your data set. Usually it's helpful to use this in it with examples, which will initialize this with some example contrast that you can use. And you can go ahead and from here you can alter these. So let's say instead of left minus right, I wanted uh, right minus left. This is a similar type of contrast. Might make more sense to do it like this. Okay. So uh, you see the you see the idea here. You can change these as you please. You can assign different weights to different regressors if you also want to do that. And hopefully the rest of these, like insert a row or clear the table, should be pretty self-explanatory. Okay, so some further options for things like smoothing, for things like co-registration. Uh, usually, well, my scanner at least, it removes the first two TRs automatically. So the first two runs, or the, sorry, the first two volumes are automatically discarded. So usually I don't remove any TRs. And I do volume registration to the very first volume might increase the full width half max to six. Everything else is fine. Uh, what censoring will do is if there's any motion above this uh, millimeter limit, then it'll censor that time point and it will not enter that into the GLM. Okay. 
some more options here. Uh, for example, maybe I want to run 3D Remel Fit. Maybe I don't want to run cluster simula simulations and so on. The alignment options are usually good as the default. You can read about this more in one of the recent AFNI papers detailing their 3D Alineate and cost functions. And lastly, for Tallyrack and warping options, you can choose different data sets to warp to. So you have a few different templates that you can choose. There's MNI and there's Tallyrack. Once you're done with all that, click on this generate AFNI proc py command. So in a sense, uber underscore subject serves as a wrapper for AFNI proc py. All right, and you'll see this example command, which we'll use to generate a script for your subject. <clears throat> Once you're happy with that, close that out, see any defaults that you've changed, and make sure that everything looks okay to you. Once that's done, click on this next button over here, and this will show you the output from that command you just saw. And make sure there are no errors in this screen. It'll tell you you can go ahead and run this if you wish to, else you can go ahead, close this, and click on the screen button to actually run the procedure and you'll see all the output spit out to this screen right here. And you can stop it and it'll say that it failed. Process just finished failure. But that's okay. That's how uber underscore subject at py works. Again, usually the hardest part is just getting your Python libraries installed and making sure everything is pointing to what it should be pointing towards. If you need more help with that, I've included a link to a message board which is fairly detailed on how you should do this. Besides that, they're currently working on something called uber underscore proc.py. They have a version released, but they're still debugging it. So for now, I think that uber underscore subject is probably the most stable form for automating your fMRI analyses in AFNI.